Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar covering the CLS COVID-19 search insurance policy, which was launched last year. My name is Bronwyn Townsend, and I'm the Senior Marketing Manager here at InfoTrack. I'm delighted to be joined today by Steve Johnson, National Key Account Manager, and Ellie Steele, Senior Underwriter at CLS, who will be taking you through today's session. Before we begin the webinar, I would like to draw your attention to the Q&A tab. It's located at the bottom of your screen. We'll be running a Q&A at the end of the session, so please type in any questions that you may have for Steve and Ellie, along with your name, into the Q&A box. That way, if we run out of time or your question requires further clarification, we can extract your information and follow up with you directly after the webinar. I'm now going to hand over to you, Steve. Thank you. Lovely. Thanks very much, Bronwyn. And hello, everyone. Thank you very much for dialing in. I know you're all extremely busy, so we do appreciate the time today. As, as Bronwyn said, I'm Steve Johnson, Key Account Manager at CLS. We have with us Ellie Steele, Senior Underwriter at CLS. And first off, my thanks to InfoTrack for hosting and promoting this webinar. We're very proud at CLS to be part of the InfoTrack service. And my thanks to all of you who access our indemnities through them is much appreciated. So as Bronwyn said, the uh, title probably lays, lays bare the topic we're going to be talking about today, search insurance, the three C's, cover claims and common misconceptions. But we're going to be focusing in particular on the search delay insurance policy that, as Bronwyn said, was launched right at the start of the COVID period. We could have nicknamed it our, our COVID policy. This was designed really to provide the widest cover of all of our search delay policies in terms of the searches covered, the transaction types and the availability of information. It was very much anticipating really the disruption to the market that continues in various ways, obviously, that COVID is going to be bringing. We very much hope you'll come away with a really good understanding of the policy, cover it provides, crucially, its limitations and exclusions, of course, and where it fits in to the InfoTrack service. So here's our agenda for today. We're going to just introduce our way in by looking at the sort of the market issues and solutions. That's rather a bold claim. I don't, don't pretend to have a solution to all market issues, but this is a, hopefully a contributing factor to helping you and your clients progress through to completion. Um, we'll look then at the specific policy, what the uh, forms of cover it provides, the searches, the transaction types and the like. I'm going to alight briefly as well on the InfoTrack service that relates to the UK Finance Handbook. Because obviously search delay insurance is one piece, but naturally there is an element about how the lenders view search insurance. And obviously that is very applicable to individual transactions of differences between lenders and their, and their views on, on insurance. We've got a couple of claims case studies. We're going to look at the policy statements of fact. Um, Ellie will be taking us through policy exclusions and misconceptions as well, hopefully to allow you to sort of direct your attention toward the right usage of the policy. And Ellie will also be going through some policy frequently asked questions as well. And as Bronwyn said right at the start, please do feel free to add to those using the chat box on the right hand side of your screen. So what is happening in conveyancing? Well, goodness me, you above all will, of course, know what's happening. We have a variety of interesting things introduced, all of which are creating one of the most febrile atmospheres in conveyancing that I've ever come across. I've been in the industry working with various different service providers since 2003. Um, and this is, this is a, a pretty unique situation. And I'm sure some of you will have been in the industry longer than myself. We've obviously got the stamp duty holiday introduced by the Chancellor back at the middle of 2020. We have staff shortages in local authorities, which of course are leading to problems in accessing information. Uh, those delays can include hacking, most dramatically in, in Hackney recently which is leading to the partial availability of some information, but obviously a great deal which isn't. There's backlogs, there's pressure from obviously the various stakeholders within, within conveyancing, be it the home buyer themselves, be it the estate agent, of course. And of course, we're coming up to the summer period, and that's then leading to some people at least being able to get away and have some sort of probably locally based holidays. And I think that sort of final point is despite all of those factors, chains are still completing so you know well done everyone and i, I can sort of speak as uh, someone's looking into conveyance as well from the outside well done everyone it's, it's remarkable the amount of um, chains which are able to complete despite all of these factors sort of acting against you and we very much hope that the, the covid policy as we might as well call it is contributing to your ability to move chains forward and complete on behalf of your clients so we're going to look now specifically at the COVID search delay policy as we call it. 
We'll look at the extent of cover. We'll look at the searches. We'll look at the transaction types. And we'll look at the add some examples of payments that have been made as we work through the next few slides. So cover provided by the Infotrack CLS search delay policy is as follows. You have, as is standard in our regular search delay policy, cover for local authority searches, drainage and water, CON 29M, and the commons land and village green element of the searches as well, and all of the regulated, PCCB regulated equivalents of those. Now, the transaction types that are covered are established properties and new build within the same policy. But here's where we divert away from our standard search delay policy. And this is what makes the, uh, what makes the COVID policy a little different in as much as we also incorporate search delay cover for environmental searches and for chancel as well. Now you'll see at the bottom of the screen there, highways and utilities. I put those up on screen to note that we are able to provide search delay cover for those two forms of, uh, of search. They're not included within the CLS COVID policy. They are standalone bespoke policy requirements um, that your clients can access you know, as and when needed. Obviously the local authority search provides information such as historic planning and building regs approval, which has either been granted, refused, or whether there are any pending or previous enforcement notices. The search also provides information in respect of whether the roads serving the property are maintainable at public expense, whether the property is burdened by a tree preservation order, whether the property is designated as a listed building or falls in an area of outstanding natural beauty or in a conservation area. And the cover you'll see as we go through relates to those forms of, those forms of notice. Drainage and water search, obviously confirming whether or not the property is connected to the mains water supply and public sewer, together with the route of those drains and sewers. It'll also confirm whether the, who the water authority is and how the water is charged. This can be particularly important to a purchaser as this will have an impact on the cost they pay for water, particularly if the property is not connected to a water meter. The mining search will of course set out whether the property has ever been affected by past mining activity, whether there is any present or future mining in the area, and if a property has been built over a historic coal mine shop, which could cause subsidence issues in future. And of course, this has then an impact on the property owners' enjoyment and indeed insurance costs as well. In relation to common land and town and village green searches, these will advise whether or not the land has rights in common to allow others to use the land, whether that be for rights for animals to graze, the right to take peat turf or wood, the rights to fish, and finally, the right to use or access the land for recreational or other purposes, such as part of a community activity. And again, this element of the search pack is commonly bought by those purchasing property in a rural area. And without this search, there are risks that the third parties may enjoy, that third parties may enjoy a right to use the land. There may be restrictions as to the uses that the owner of the property could make of that property, which could potentially have an adverse impact on the property value had this information been known before they chose to purchase the property. So it's this form of exposure, search delay policy is seeking to provide some comfort in the absence of that search information coming back. And as I mentioned, the COVID policy has extended into it alongside those four core cut forms of cover. Um, it covers the chancel search, which of course, or the absence of a chancel search, which of course confirms whether the parish church has the right to call upon their parishioners to request funds to repair the chancel of the church. Whilst that policy doesn't cover the payment to the church, it will cover any loss in market value and any legal fees surrounding it. And again, in the absence of that search being returned in time, you have this form of cover available. The environmental search will of course advise whether the property is likely to be affected by contaminated land following as a result of past industrial land use. Now, while our policy will not cover the cost of cleaning up the land under Part 2A of the Environmental Protection Act, obviously the legislation which introduced the uh, potential financial, financial liability for current occupiers, it will cover for any loss in market value or legal fees surrounding it. So it's these searches, it's these exposures for your clients, that this search delay cover will provide. Now, I did mention highways and utilities. So to briefly touch on those, as I say, those are additional but they are available through in, in InfoTrack and through CLS as bespoke policies. And highways in particular is something we started to see becoming a more common request in relation to search delay as 
the highways departments, be they in the local authority or in the county council, are impacted, of course, by the same, uh, the same um, issues that the land charges departments are impacted by. The highways of search, of course, seeks to identify whether a road is adopted, whether it's part of the public highway and maintained at public expense. And this, of course, can be important in helping to decipher who is responsible for the upkeep of road and, of course, can also confirm the full extent of the highway, including width and bound. And once again, not having this information present at the time when the transaction is taking place can, of course, create an exposure for the client. Now, just to touch finally on utility searches, um, they're quite, and it's quite an interesting one for our risk profile when it comes to insurance. And again, this is one of the things that maintains utilities as a standalone bespoke policy, rather than something we habitually include within our, our standard search delay policies, or indeed within this COVID policy. Utility searches obviously provide information on the utilities which serve and surround the property, including you know, gas, oil, electric, water supply. And this search tends to be of interest to those who are developing a site. Now, we can only offer cover for a continued use of the property on the basis that the locations of the utilities on a development project are going to be extremely important when digging the foundations. You know, there would be costs and disruption involved. We deem that trying to provide utility cover when there is a development taking place, unfortunately, the risk is too significant due to the potential, you know, frankly, the extremely high cost that could be associated in the event that one not only comes across underground utilities, but actually disrupts them in some way. Um, in a previous life, I came across a case in Swindon where an unfortunate developer had managed to sever one of the primary um, cables carrying the internet into about a third of, a third of Swindon. And the fine and the costs of then um, putting right that extremely, that cable packed with, packed with fiber optics was in the region of about 750,000, so not likely undertaken. So for that reason, our utility cover where it exists solely relates to providing um, delay when there is a non-development transaction. But I hope that summarizes coming back to the COVID policy, the extent of cover. You have the cover provided in the single policy for established properties and new build transactions and cover for local authority, drainage and water, on 29M, commons land, village or green, contaminated land element of your environmental report and the chancel search all in the one. Now, the other point worth making here is this, the policy also allows for a partial return of search information. And perhaps the most relevant example of this right now is Hackney. Hackney, as you're all aware, I'm sure, was hacked um, some time ago now, actually, back into 2020. And as yet, it's been unable to restore its service to provide regulated or, of course, the official local authority searches. What they have been able to do is to make some information available. And once again, the COVID CLS policy will enable your, your, yourselves to capture that partial information and make use of it in the course of the transaction, but still be able to rely on the policy for the information that Hackney in this example have not been able to make available and may not be able to make available for a very long time. Just to touch then on the sorts of cover that the policy actually provides. Well, it really covers a variety of different Things, both financial and expertise. So in the event, obviously, that there's a claim, we'll provide reasonable legal cover, a cost for legal fees and other professional fees and expenses, which the insured party might incur when having to deal with an adverse interest that's caused a claim to be made. We'll also provide cover for the cost of an out-of-court settlement relating to an adverse interest. So once again, if there is an out-of-court, you know, agreed settlement between two parties, cover with, will be provided there. Um, if there is money to be paid to a third party to free the property from an adverse interest, again, cover is provided by this very policy. And if there's a reduction in the market value of the property caused directly by an insured risk, then once again, cover for that loss in value, financial cover for that loss in market value is made available. But it's also worth noting that as well as the financial cover the policy provides, it also can provide the insured party with access to legal expertise. And it can be quite commonplace that actually the value of that legal expertise, if you start to look sort of hourly rates, actually can exceed the subsequent financial compensation that's then paid out. So that's sometimes a slightly underplayed part of these policies, but one that can be hugely valued for a homeowner presented with a potentially quite complex legal situation, then essentially have free access 
to a or, or ensured access to an expert legal panel. Now, obviously the policy itself, this COVID policy doesn't exist in isolation, it exists within the InfraTrack environment. And I just wanted to point yourselves toward this particular screen within the InfraTrack environment, many of you will use already, so you'll be familiar with this. But within InfraTrack, not only can you access the policy itself, but you can also access the lender's handbook to establish whether the lender um, in the specific transaction you're acting on has a particular view in relation to search insurance. You can see this particular lender um, accepts search insurance with the provision that there's an unqualified certificate of title. We know that the lenders have quite a variety of guidance when it comes to search delay insurance. And obviously that, uh, that feature within the InfraTrack service will hopefully point you in the right direction in terms of policy suitability for the transaction you're working. So we'll move now towards our first claims case study. Now, search indemnities are actually one of our more frequently claimed policies. Now, the main reason to this is due to the charges referenced in local authority searches, you know, such as charges for pest control, for example i.e. where the local authority may have registered a charge against the property, perhaps under the Prevention of Damage by Pests Act of 1949. I know that'll be top of everyone's reading list, where the local authority may have requested that the property owner take steps for the destruction of, in this case, rats or mice. But if the landowner failed to take these steps, the local authority has the power to carry out actions, but then recover their expenses from the property owner. And as a result, a local land charge is then issued on the property. And it's that type of scenario that often forms the basis of a typical claim that we might be required to process in relation to search delay policy. Now on notification of a claim, if the claims handlers are happy that all of the policy terms were complied with and the charge is of course valid, then the claim will be settled immediately. Sometimes, as I mentioned on the previous slide, if the circumstances are slightly more complicated or specialist legal advice is required, then a panel solicitor may be instructed to investigate. But if that then leads towards the claim, so be it, of course, a payout, then so be it, a payout is then of course made. And for search delay insurance, the average indemnity payout for these types of claims is around 12, 1300 pounds or so. Now, in our first claims case study, we recently had to process a claim that was on a search delay policy where a local search was returned after completion and it transpired that there were charges on the title references and the charges were imposed by the local authority following the removal of waste by them from the property. The local authority had originally issued Section 38 notice under the Clearance in Default of a Public Health Act of 1936. There was also the Section 81 notice under the Environmental Protection Act of 1990 cleaning up the land. As the property owner at the time, did not do, as either notice was requiring them to do, the local authority then carried out the clearance and added a charge on the property to cover the financial costs that had accumulated. Now, obviously, when the later buyer moved into the property, having gone through exchange and completion, obviously a search, had, a local authority search had been ordered, but for a variety of reasons, was not available at the time when exchange and completion had happened. The claims handlers, once the claim was notified to them, assessed the risk and determined that while it was likely that the seller would have known about these charges as they had occurred during their ownership, upon review, it was understood that the seller was in fact, and sadly was incapacitated and was moving towards a nursing home. So the likelihood of, uh, of the, um, the buyer who are insured party having any strong claim for misrepresentation was quite rightly low. And as a result, quite rightly, again, we then played the claim in full at a cost of £2,377. And once again, within that claims process, not only was there that 2000 2400 or so payout, there was also the legal expertise behind it that allowed us to, us and of course the insured party, to reach quickly satisfactory outcome. Now, over the next few slides, I'm just going to take you through at a headline level the statements of fact that are situated within the COVID search delay policy find on the InfraTrack platform. And they start with, of course, typically the property has to be located within England or Wales. Moving on, I, neither the seller nor the buyer is aware of any monies owing to a local authority in respect of the property. 
So you, of course, have see a theme that starts to emerge throughout these later statements of fact, that no prior knowledge of any risk is in place, of course, not untypical for an insurance policy. You know, moving on, neither the seller nor the buyer is aware of any disputes in relation to access to or from the property. And no payments have been made or demanded in respect to the maintenance or repair of any access ways. Moving on further, neither the seller nor the buyer is aware of any building work at the property that is lacking planning permission or building regulations consent. And we have neither the seller nor the buyer is aware of any other adverse matter contained in the local authority registers that are applicable to the property. Now, we then move on the uh, bottom right, you can see there, no awareness of any remediation notice. This of course relates to the potential for contaminated land concerns to be, uh, to be actually active and present on the property. So this of course now is extending where we extend this search delay cover into the environmental report that of course many of you will, will do on a, on a very, very regular basis. So if the buyer or indeed the seller of the property is aware of a remediation notice, that of course would, in, in relating to part two, a contaminated land, that of course would be invalidating the policy. Now, there needs to be, of course, no entry on the title deeds relating to chance of repair liability. Once again, the spirit of the, of the policy is very much around a delay in a report coming back. If there is known to be a chance of liability on the associated or, or the potential of associated with the property, then the policy wouldn't seek to cover what is essentially, sadly, a, you know, you don't, don't, don't provide cover for a, a building that's already burning. And then you have neither the seller nor the buyer of the property is aware of any intent or intention by the church to register or enforce a chance of liability. But of course, if your buyer can meet all of those statements, in fact, then they're an utterly valid candidate for this sort of extended search delay policy. Now, at this point, I'm gonna bring Ellie in to the, uh, to the presentation. Thanks for coming in, Ellie. We're gonna look at here, exclusions and misconceptions. What does the policy not cover? Thanks, Steve, and good morning, everyone. So Steve's had the lovely job of describing where we're able to help, which is great. I, on the other hand, have a little less fortunate job, and I have a job of telling you where we're not able to assist. So you may think it's unusual for us to speak on a full slide in relation to where we're unable to offer cover. But as you know, with the insurance distribution directive and the obligations you have under this, it's impo more important than ever to ensure that you're confident with our policies to allow you to distribute these to your clients. So to confirm, whilst we can cover for delayed chancel on environmental searches, the policy itself does not cover the cost of the repairs of the chancel or the cost of remediating the land following designation under part 2A of the Environmental Protection Act 1990. But for chancel, it would cover defence and legal costs in relation to a chancel repair claim and any detriment in the market value as a result of this. For the environmental search aspect, the policy would cover defence costs and legal fees in trying to dispute designation of contaminated land where the insured was not aware that the property was potentially liable as the search had not been returned prior to completion and it may have disclosed the up-to-date information. Grouping the next few common misconceptions together, we're not prepared to offer cover for matters which the purchaser would be aware of following the review of office copy entries, responses to the property information form, or indeed results of previous searches. The reason behind this is of course, if the purchaser is made aware of adverse matters, they have the opportunity to resolve this, whereas the indemnity covers any unknown adverse matters. Examples of areas that would not be covered would be, if a claim arises from losses which were referred to on the office copy entries to the property and were later revealed in a local search upon its return, we would not be able to offer cover. As part of the due diligence carried out during the purchase of the property, any charges referred to on the office copy entries will be known and excluded from our policy offering. A similar stance is taken with answers raised in the TA6 form. If the seller or buyer is aware of matters which could have an impact on the market value of the property, i.e. concerns as to whether the property is connected to the mains water supply, this is a question at 12.4 of the TA6 form, but would also be included in the drainage search. Due to the buyer already being made aware of this, this would not be a valid claim. And Steve, I think you have a comment regarding Japanese knotweed relating to the TA6 form. Is that right? Yes, that's right. So um, those of you that have been uh, been using the Infotrack platform a little while may well have seen an uh, 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 invitation to a webinar that came out last year, which actually accompanied the launch of a CLS indemnity for Japanese knotweed transactions. 
So in the event that any of your clients or that you're acting for a buyer where the seller in the transaction has declared uh, no or not known in relation to question 7.8 of the TA6 form, there is now a Japanese knotweed indemnity that can provide up to £20,000 worth of cover for a, um, a buyer who still wishes to protect themselves for Japanese knotweed being present on the, uh, on the property. I won't go into any detail on this, but there is a standalone webinar, the recording of which Infotrack can make available to you if you'd like to know a little bit more both about the indemnity, but also about the implications of Japanese knotweed answers within the TA6 form and what they mean for sellers, buyers, and of course their legal representatives. Thanks, Ellie. Lovely, thank you. Um, to ensure that the policy is not misused, we have exclusions in respect of losses arising from matters revealed in a previous search. So if they were revealed in a previous search and the results were available to review provide, uh, prior to completion, sorry, then they are known to the seller who would then have to be open and honest about these matters. So some insureds believe that the policy provides protection for the return of a delayed search, for example, if the search refers to an outstanding charge. They believe that this is an insured event, however, this is not the case. For a successful claim a where a charge is involved, the charge owner, for instance, the local authority, would need to be asking for the payment without any approach to them by the insured, or the insured would need to have a strong reason as to how this affects the market value of the property. The important thing to remember is a loss has to present itself for a claim to be instigated. So another com common misconception is if the local or water authority answer a question in the search which the insured deems to cause them a loss. They will consider this to be a communication as the local authority are the enforcing party, but again this is not the case. A claim is only valid where the enforcing party is clearly making a claim and requesting the funds for a charge. TLS are transparent with their policy wordings and request material information within the statements of fact and we do not add in hidden exclusions in into our policies, unlike other providers. So passing back to you now, Steve, where you're going to talk about a claim, another claim example received against the policy cover. Love it. Thank you very much, Ellie. Um, yes, yeah, so on to our second claims case study. Uh, the, the, the foundation of this claim is somewhat given away by the uh, small morph-like character there clutching his, uh, his outside screwdriver and standing next to uh, a boiler. So in this instance, the insured party was able to place a, a claim with us as a result of being unaware of a prohibition notice that was in place on the property they'd taken occupancy of. And because the search information hadn't been returned, obviously they'd taken out the, uh, the policy to cover that eventuality. The insured party was unaware of the restriction that would allow, that essentially prohibit them to occupy or to let their property until remedial, work, remedial works were carried out. And this was, um, came as a result of the boiler being previously condemned and indeed damp issues within the bathroom. So the policy covered not only the cost of the installation of the boiler, but also the cost to remove the notice and the legal fees surrounding it. And, and the, again, the payout, not too dissimilar from the case we touched on previously, the costs of the charges covered by the policy were in just over 2,000 pounds, 2,040 exactly. And again, I think this reflects that in most cases, the amount of money that is actually due back for these sorts of cases is significant enough to cause people some disruption. No one really wants to be hit with bills of a couple of thousand pounds. Very often insurance policies get attention when they are providing cover that's into tens, twenties, 50,000 pounds. But we're talking here about a significant amount of money um, that could provide quite a disruption for people otherwise who'd be enjoying their new property. So again, hope a useful case study. And if anyone has any other case studies they'd like to feed into this, please do feel free to let us know about those. Always interested to hear your experience of these types of CLS policies. Now, at this point, we're going to move towards the tail end of the presentation with a few frequently asked questions that we've had both coming into our help desk, but also in previous webinars on this form of search delay policy. So Ellie, I'm going to uh, call on your expertise, please, with the first question, which is, can you have a policy to cover the local authority search only? Um, so we do understand that the policy may only be required for one out of six of the searches mentioned on the policy, but the wording covers for any one, two, or all of the searches. So there's no benefit to obtaining wording for just the one search. 
the premium would not alter as this has been calculated accordingly in, in that if a claim were to arise, we were only likely to see one claim from one of the searches covered, unless of course the insured is really unfortunate in that event that is still covered by the indemnity. Excellent, thanks Ellie. Um, the next question relates to the environmental search element of the cover, and obviously environmental searches have cover a wide range of different forms of uh, feature. So the question is, can we offer cover for the following additional searches, essentially embedded within the environmental energy, high speed to rail, flood, that type of thing? So unfortunately not, we can't, we did look into this offering in some depth recently, however, we envisaged that the risk exposure from these searches would be quite significant. If these searches are instructed, it's more than likely because there's a presumption that adverse matters are going to be flagged, leading to an instant claim. So unfortunately, we can't cover these. But as mentioned previously, we can co co cover the additional highways and utility searches as mentioned previously. Thank you. OK, so on to the next one. And this is a question relating to timing of when the policy is, is actually taken out. So are you able to take out search delay policy indemnity at the beginning of a transaction? Yes, so as we've discussed, we know that local authorities are behind at the moment, particularly in light of the pressures of COVID-19 and the stamp duty holiday, which has caused a surge of orders. If you're in a confident position that the searches will be delayed, then you can obtain our policy prior to exchange and completion. This means that you just have one less thing to worry about. Lovely. Thank you. So on to the next. If the envisaged ser delayed search is returned after the inception date of the policy, but before exchange and completion, will a claim be covered? So if the search returns before exchange or completion, and you can see that there are matters within the search that were unforeseen, then no, unfortunately, there's no valid claim here. The purchaser still has the opportunity to re review the results and has an option to withdraw from the transaction to negotiate with the seller at this stage. As part of these negotiations, this may include a reduction in market value, the policy provides protection at the point that the purchaser has a financial interest in the property, for example, from exchange and completion. Thank you very much. And um, hopefully a nice simple answer to this one. Does this um, COVID search delay policy cover new build properties? The simple answer is yes. The policy provides cover for continued use and new build properties, along with properties which have all had alterations carried out in the last 12 months. And again, with the COVID policy, does it provide cover for commercial property transactions? Yes. So the example that you provided earlier on a claim received um, regarding pest control um, is actually more common for commercial properties. So, yes, they are covered. Thank you. OK. Now, coming towards the, the terms of the policy, what's the period cut of cover and do we cover successes in time? Uh, so the policy it covers uh, for a period coextensive with like, both the purchaser and the lender's interest in the property. It doesn't pass on to successors. The main reason for this is we want to assess any matters which may have arisen during the ownership of the insured's interest in the property. OK, thanks very much, Ellie. Now, I think that we touched on this earlier, in particular in relation to the unfortunate folks at Hackney Council. So the question is, does the COVID delay policy cover where partial Return, reports have been returned? Yes, so as mentioned previously, as a result of the recent hacks at local authorities, where possible, that they were returning partially completed reports on properties. So our policy covers both where there's a complete lack of report or where partial results are returned for local authority and drainage searches. Wonderful, thank you very much, Ellie. I'm just gonna briefly throw up on screen now um, uh, and how to order. And again, those of you that are familiar with the Infotrack system, no doubt this will be a familiar page. Um, the policy is located in a slightly different position to the other CLS indemnities, of course, because it very much relates specifically to search cover. So you'll see it here present alongside the listings of the, uh, of the, the searches, the local authorities, whatever else the other search pack may be. Down at the bottom there, you have the option to tick the box for the residential search delay indemnity. And you can see the LOI, limited indemnity options available there. So. As I say, there is, of course, a distinct section for indemnities within the Infotrack system. But this is where this particular search delay policy is located. Ellie, over to you for our, uh, our closing summary. Yes, so uh, to, su to summarise the policy cover, it indemnifies for loss in market value as a result of an adverse matter being revealed within a search which the insured was not aware of due to the searches not being returned prior to completion. 
It also provides cover for the professional and legal costs to defend and settle a claim, including the payment of any financial charge to free the property from the, the encumbrance. The insurance avoids breaks in the property chain and the risk of transactions falling through due to delayed searches. It's an immediate solution to ensure that exchange and completion can still take place without further delay. Um, so I hope this was all insightful and beneficial to you all. I'm just going to pass over to Bron to see if there's been any further questions. Thanks, Sally. We do have one question regarding uh, one of the case studies outlined today. In the case study about the claim for unpaid rubbish clearance, if there has been a valid claim for misrepresentation against the seller, would CLS still pay out and then pursue the claim on the buyer behalf, or would they pursue the claim on the buyer's behalf to clear the charge? So it's my understanding, um, I wouldn't be able to say for definite without discussing it fully with the claims department, uh, but my understanding that would be that we would pursue the claim on the buyer's behalf to clear the charge. Wonderful, thank you for answering that, Ellie. Uh, we don't have any other questions today, but a big thank you for uh, presenting today, Steve and Ellie, and for giving up your time to help us with this informative session. If you have any other questions about what you've seen today, you can contact Steve or Ellie directly, or if you've got questions in relation to search delay insurance, how it works, or how to order a policy through InfoTrack, please get in touch with your account manager and they'll be able to assist you. All that's left to say is thank you for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.